Hi everyone, I hope you're having a good weekend. I wanted to record this vlog and get it up today because I've got another busy week coming up. Um, firstly, because I already have some February 2020 entries being referred to my career transitioning and outplacement programme. And secondly, I'm delighted to say that I'm now a member of the PR team supporting Ben Chapelard, who is the Liberal Democrat candidate um, standing in Tunbridge Wells, where I live, um, in the forthcoming general election. Anyway, you'll be pleased to know that I'm not going to be using this blog to promote Ben. I'm sure I'll have plenty of other opportunities to do that. What I wanted to discuss was, in fact, um, linked back to a conversation I was having with um, a lawyer last week. It centred around how our cultural backgrounds and upbringing have played a heavy part in the career choices we make. Like myself, this individual um, is Asian, and we were both talking about how much our parents influenced our thinking when it comes to career choices. And for those of you who also have Asian parents, will know that they tend to have quite a limited list when it comes to professions that are suitable for their kids. That list includes, for example, law, medicine, accountancy, IT, possibly pharmacy, but it doesn't really extend beyond that. So when I think back to when I was applying for the diversity courses, I always had it in my mind that I wanted to be a journalist, but my parents thought otherwise. For them, journalism was just a non-starter. So I can say that that was possibly one of the single biggest reasons why I ended up studying law at university. And then, of course, I sort of jumped onto that roller coaster, and before I knew it, I was um, starting a training contract at Nick Winters. This conversation then really got me thinking about what I would say to my sort of 16, 17, or indeed 18 year old self. How should I have gone about planning my career choices? The first thing that jumps out is experiment. Be aware of the fact that you are going to be influenced by people around you and don't let that stop you from looking at the different things that you may well be interested in. It, your thinking doesn't have to be linear. You can ex explore different professions at the same time. And certainly, if you are unsure about law, then doing a non-law degree is you know, perhaps a you know, a good route to think about. Once you're at sort of a degree level and you're thinking about postgraduate jobs, that's when, you know, again, it's really important to think about how you're going to determine which route to follow. So don't just limit your thinking to the sort of big city law firms because they'll pay you LPC fees or because they have nice shiny offices, which is what I sort of, you know, was attracted to. Um, that is, of course, my naive sort of 20 year old self. Um, think about um, how you're going to find out a bit more about what being a lawyer is like and of course work experience is by far the best way to achieve that. It's also important to get talking to as many people as possible. That said, it's worth remembering that when you are speaking to people and they're offering you advice, it often will be a little bit biased. I think it's almost impossible for people to offer advice without including some sort of form of opinion, which may well be prejudiced by their own personal experiences, be that positive or negative. Um, that's why, in addition to talking to people, it's worth thinking about where else you're going to source relevant information from. So that obviously includes law firm literature. So go beyond looking at their graduate recruitment website. Think about what they're saying in their main corporate website. Have a look at the legal directories to see what the um, you know, commentators are saying about those firms. So again, um, review articles about any firms that you're targeting in the, um, in the legal press. It's also worth looking up profiles of some of the lawyers that you've met on LinkedIn just to see what their sort of education background is, what hobbies and interests they're involved in. That will not only help you to determine if law is the right career for you, it will also help you to get a better sense of whether once you've chosen a firm to apply to, it will be a good cultural fit for you. Anyway, that's what I was going to say about sort of researching firms, but 
One other final point I want to make, um, and this certainly resonates with me, is that we will all at some point in our careers make the wrong choice. I certainly did um, when I made the switch from journalism to legal recruitment. I thought that it was possibly the worst decision of my life because I hated being in a legal recruitment agency. But looking back at it, rather than moan and have a rant, I realised that, in fact, it was not a bad thing after all because it gave me the knowledge that I needed to set up my consultancy. You know, without spending a year in a recruitment agency, I certainly wouldn't know how to approach law firms on behalf of a candidate and what the, what the sort of protocol is with regard to um, screening candidates, so on and so forth. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, provided you use any mistakes that you make as an opportunity to learn and to reassess your options, then it's never you know, going to be as bad as people sort of think it will be. Anyway, that's what I'm going to say. So thank you very much for listening. And um, I'll be hopefully recording something very soon. So do keep a lookout for it. Thank you.